Okay. So, yeah, um, but I'm not a real big fan of the rehabs, Mac. My biggest thing, my big bread and butter, I don't know how much you know about my background. I, I buy it as is, sell it as is, majority of the time. Not even sell it. I exit on a lease option. My bread and butter is lease with an option to buy. I get mm -hmm. a down payment from somebody, they move in it, and they pay me a rent with an option to buy at a future time. And most of the time, they don't execute that option. That's my main exit strategy. Yeah. That's that's what mine was going to be. Yeah, because it sounds really good. I was just curious if most people are coming to the table with, you know, 10, 15 grand down, you know, like if they if they have that money down to put for the option and they have good enough credit to rent from you, why not just get their own mortgage? You know, because we're not going off their credit. See, that's the thing. You got to have the right credit. You got to have the right debt to income ratio. You got to have the right uh, uh, time on the job. You got to have the cash reserves. I mean, all the things that lenders run you through, blood samples, your mother's maiden name, whatever thing they come up with, which you probably know that gauntlet. I know that gauntlet because I can't I can't even qualify for a loan, but I done bought a bunch of houses and never qualified for no loan, just for the record. So, um, you know, there's a reason. You know, we call them penalty box buyers. They cannot qualify for a loan right now. I'm even a penalty box buyer, but I understand creative real estate, so I don't fall under that thing. I can't even use my VA loan. You know what I mean? I'm a disabled veteran and can't even use my VA loan. But I wouldn't even suggest using it anyway because there's so many other ways to buy houses creatively via seller finance or via subject to. Well, let me, okay, let me ask it another way then. What what do you look for in a um, owner, in a, in a lease option buyer or rent or tenant that is different from a traditional, like you, we both know all of those things they put you through in that ringer to get qualified for a traditional, what are like the main differences? Cause both of them need a down payment. Both of them need, you know, time at the job. Both of them needed a DTI. Right. But not necessarily no. uh, my qualification. Number one qualification is down payment. You got a reasonable down. You got 20,000 down. I can get you in the house. I, don't, I mean, I'm never going to be in it that deep. You come with 20 K you're getting in the house. <laughs> Generally yeah. speaking. Yeah. That's the first thing. Then number two is some type of income so you can pay for yeah. it. So down payment. I don't even care. Your credit score can be 350. It don't matter to me because credit okay. can be fixed. Okay. But you got to remember too, there are people out here who make a lot of money uh, self-employed, but they don't have proof of income. W2. You see what I'm saying? So you I'm have that. Yeah, oh, I make like, yeah, I make like a hundred grand a year almost then. But, you know, with, with, with the way that they do taxes, you know, I claim a lot of stuff on my income. And Not it doesn't really work out to exactly what, you know, my, my real income is because, you know, we, we do what we can on the taxes. So. Exactly. Uh, and that's a lot of people just like that. And that's who we're looking for. You got 15 grand, 10 grand, 20 grand, something reasonable. Cause like, if I get in the house for no money down and close the costs only, and somebody come along with 10 grand, I didn't just even buy a house. I was paid to take the house. And that's how most of my deals are. I'm paid to take houses. So that's, I mean, that's, that's a whole nother mindset shift. I know it sounds like, what? you can't be paid to take houses. Yeah. Every, mostly every deal I do, I'm paid to take the house because I have no money in a deal. That's called an infinite return. It just cash flow.